this video, I'm going to show how to construct the Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient. First of all, get some data. In this case, there are five individuals with their data disaggregately sorted. Can I point out that since there are five individuals right here, one person would represent one-fifth of the total, or 20%. In economics, that 20% is called a quintile. The first step, then, is to arrange things in order from the lowest income earner to the highest income earner. You can see here that Bob is the lowest income earner with $15, and Derek is the highest income earner with $200. Next step is to add the $15 from Bob, the $70 from Kathy, the $90 from Adrian, the $125 from Eddie, and the $200 from Derek for $500. The total income in this economy is $500. Next, we're going to find out how much each quintile, or each 20%, makes of the total income. Thus, Bob's $15 represents 3% of the total income. You can see that Kathy's is 14, Adrian's is 18, Eddie's is 25, and Derek has 40% of the income. So in other words, 20% or one-fifth of all income earners makes 40% of all of the income. The next step is to find the cumulative percent of income. So now I'm going to take the 3% from Bob and add it to the 14% for Kathy for a total cumulative percent of income of 17. Likewise, you can see I've added 17 plus 18, 35 plus 25, and 60 plus 40. This should always add up to 100%. Next, I simply construct data. Using the data, I plot the data for the Lorenz curve. The blue curve is the Lorenz curve. The pink line is the line of perfect equality. In other words, if 20% of the income earners receive 20% of the pie and 40% of the income earners receive 40% of the pie, income would be, would be divided equally and the result would be a straight line. The Lorenz curve shows, however, that the income is not perfect. Now, let's find the area underneath of the Lorenz curve so that we can begin to find the Gini coefficient. Using the properties of trapezoids, I have calculated each of the areas. The total of those areas add up to 0.33. Now, the area underneath of the pink curve, or a right triangle, would add up to 0.5. The area in green is 0.33. I'm sorry, the area underneath of the Lorentz curve is 0.33. Subtracting the area of the right triangle from the area underneath of the Lorentz curve equals the area in green. Next, all I have to do to find the Gini coefficient is to take the area in green and divide it by 0 0.50 and I receive 0.34. The Gini coefficient is the ratio of the area between the line of perfect equality and the area of the right triangle. One could have simply have multiplied by 2. A Gini coefficient shows income disparity. A high Gini coefficient would show that wealth is concentrated among a few. A low Gini coefficient, of course, shows a more equitable distribution. Here, I have a few selected Gini coefficients. You can see that in Japan and Sweden, the low Gini coefficient means that income is more equitably distributed. However, in the two African countries here, income seems to be concentrated among a few uh, wealthy individuals. Please visit me at my blog at microeconomics, or if you're an AP teacher, please
please visit me at teachingapeconomics.blogspot.com.